Thank you so much. Medicines should not be a luxury. That is the conviction with which I stand here, both as a biomedical researcher and also as a global health act advocate. COVID, as already was, uh, has been said, has created the perfect storm for us to see how the current medical innovation model is broken and why we must, must indeed rethink and in reinvent it. Thanks to uh, over 20 years of research, advances by many researchers in many different places, often supported by pub public funding, we actually were able, it was a formidable achievement that we were able in less than a year to produce multiple effective vaccines. And of course, the pharmaceutical industry played a big role, in particular in scaling up the manufacturing of those vaccines. But we have collectively failed to make these life-saving technologies accessible equi equi equitably uh, in many parts of the world. Um, and this has many reasons, but including that our governments have started to hoard vaccines to uh, protect their population first, some governments, and at the same time, companies uh, have considered the vaccines as private property that they could sell to the highest bidder and at the same time make uh, a lot of profits. It hasn't always been like that, and we have uh, examples from the past, think about insulin, about the polio vaccines, where actually m major medical breakthroughs were developed, made widely available, without patents, and without that profit-driven business strategy behind. However, since the 1980s, 90s, our governments have decided uh, that uh, the, the responsibility for the development and the making available of new uh, medicines and vaccines should be left to the private sector, and then evidently with profit motive as the main uh, driving force. Now, that make gives us a bit of a design problem, because to make that profit motive functioning, we needed to create, uh, uh, to privatize knowledge through patents, through patent monopolies. But if you think about how patents are, uh, why patents are awarded, there are three main criteria. One is that uh, something needs to be new, it needs to be inventive, and there needs to be commercial applicability. There is no criteria that talks about improving health outcomes. And that is why if you have a, p a medical innovation model where patents are the main driving force, you actually have a growing misalignment between people's health needs and the actual products that are being developed. If you look, for instance, at the data of uh, the, the, last, the last 10 years of all medical um, uh, treatments that have been registered, you can see that actually a large uh, majority, 67%, are not better than what we already have. On the other hand, we have roughly 25% of true medical advances, of which 2%, very little, are true medical breakthroughs. At the same time, we have many unmet medical needs for which actually no research and development happens. And I think a very well-known one is antimicrobial resistance. We have this major threat and very little research and developing happening. And then finally, for the few m real medical breakthroughs that we have had, and we've heard already some of it uh, today, for instance, CAR-T, these m treatments are made available at prices that are just impossible for health systems uh, to afford. So that is why we need change. We must rethink the business model underlying medical innovation such that it delivers medicines and vaccines that we actually need to improve people's health and deliver them as common goods, not as luxury commodities such as jewelry. And so what can be done? I, I want to focus on three issues that I think are, uh, could be transformative. The first one is that we need to foster collective intelligence and share data and no knowledge to drive the medical innovation for access, not for profit. And instead of, of doing what we do today, it's often uh, doing competition between proprietary technologies. For this, of course, we need public leadership. Public leadership accompanied with public finance and uh, a leadership that can set the priorities uh, for health. 
And then we need equity from the start, meaning that we need to share the technology plat platforms and the tools to do medical innovation with many more researchers across the world such that they can actually drive innovation to uh, address their own uh, health needs. Now, you may think this is utopian, but actually many of that is already happening on a relatively small scale. I think that every scientist and uh, here at, at CERN, we've already heard it's a core value, would agree that the most productive way to make scientific progress is actually to share ideas, to share di data, to build up upon each other's ideas. And I, if I think about my own experience, when I did my PhD in biomedical research in the 1990s, we didn't used to take out patents, to, uh, keep da data secret, etc. There was a lot of collaboration and we there was a lot of medical advances being made as well. And then a bit later, when I was working with the not-for-profit organization DNDI, the Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative, that I was one of the founding members at when I was with Médecins Sans Frontières, we actually managed to develop a new drug for sleeping sickness without patents, based on full collaboration and making all the data open. So it is totally possible because this drug is currently available for patients. So second, what we need is indeed this public finance and leadership to drive medical innovation that is fit for purpose. It's often said that well, R&D is so expensive, we need private finance uh, to, to do that, and that's why we've created that for-profit model uh, of medical innovation, such that we can create profitability for investors and shareholders. But the reality is that because we're talking about health, there are massive amounts of uh, finances going to the different steps of the R&D process. And if you will remember for the COVID vaccines, many of the vaccines have uh, received massive public support, first of all, in the years preceding COVID, then during the, the, the COVID pandemic, the R&D and the manufacturing, and at the end of the day, it is public money that has bought the vaccines to be distributed uh, to, to the populations. And it's not just COVID, actually in many instances, it's actually the government that pays early research, contributes to the R&D, and in the end pays for the medicines and vaccines, often at a relatively inflated price, not to say sometimes exorbitant. And that is actually what makes the whole medical innovation system today uh, sustainable from a business perspective. But what happens with all that profit? Only a very tiny fraction actually gets reinvested in R&D. Most of it actually is extracted from the medical innovation uh, ecosystem and goes to the pockets of the investors and the shareholders. And it doesn't benefit future research, as is often being said. So what if instead our governments use the money that they now put into paying for these very expensive medicines and massively invest them in research and development, not for profit, but for health for in, and deliver medicines as common goods that are available and affordable where needed. Or what about creating uh, a CERN for medical innovation, bringing governments together, not just on the basic science and the early stuff, but really taking medicines and vaccines that we need for public health all the way through and making them available uh, affordably to the population. And thirdly, the importance of sharing technology platform. I want to uh, give an example here, a great example that is currently happening, and we have one of the uh, leaders, so two of the leaders actually in the room here, uh, Dr. Sumia and uh, Dr. Petro, who is in the back. An important initiative spearheaded by the World Health Organization that will contribute to build more equity in our collective capacity to innovate and produce the critical health tools we need. And so this is an initiative where there is uh, an effort ongoing to develop the mRNA vaccine platform technology in South Africa. And once it will be uh, up to date, or up to date, uh, where it will be ready, it will be shared with at least 15 vaccine producers in uh, middle-income countries that will not only be able to produce the vaccine, but also employ deploy the mRNA technology to do their local innovation uh, in the future. So I think, in my opinion, we cannot 
let this biggest health crisis of all of our lifetime go by without really thinking carefully, how can we do this much better? I think it's time to truly innovate, not just the science and the technology of which we talk all, ta all the time, but in the way we incentivize and use that scientific progress to actually serve global public health. I think we need to m redress the economic rules of the game to make our health system, our health innovation system, again, fit for purpose, with which I mean addressing people's health needs and ensuring equitable access to all where and when needed. And I will leave you with this quote to think about. Thank you so much. <laughs>